Hello everyone, and welcome back to our universe. Today, we'll be talking about Starfax. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about fun facts and interesting stuff about stars. So let's jump right in into these nuclear reactors, but obviously not actually jumping into them, because that would be deadly. A star is massive, a star is bright, and a star is a sphere of very hot gas called plasma, which is held together by its own gravity. Stars radiate energy created from nuclear fusion. This is a process that takes place in the star's core, and it involves fusing burning hydrogen to make helium. As a star is near the end of its life, it begins to change the helium into heavier chemical elements, such as carbon and oxygen and all sorts of things will change, including the colour, the density, the mass, and the size. The nearest star to Earth is of course the Sun, which is classified as a G2 yellow dwarf star. After the Sun, the nearest star to Earth is Proxima Centauri. This is about 40 trillion kilometres away, which is about 4.2 light years. This means that the light from that star takes 4.2 years to reach Earth. Using our newest, fastest and most advanced space probes, the propulsion systems of these probes will actually take 75,000 years to get there. There is approximately 200 to 400 billion stars in our own Milky Way galaxy. Each galaxy contains hundreds of billions of stars and there is estimated to be over 100 billion galaxies in the universe. So the total number of stars is absolutely mind-boggling. Estimated to be at least 70 sextillion, and possibly as high as 300 sextillion. This is what that number looks like. Stars are usually between 1 and 10 billion years old. Some stars may even get close to the age of the observed universe, at nearly 13.8 billion years old. Stars form from nebulas, which are large gas areas. As gravity actually attracts more and more gas, young stars called protostars start to form in a thick molecular cloud in different areas of the nebula. And then once nuclear fusion has begun in its core, a star has sufficiently enough fuel to spend the majority of its life as a main sequence star. And a main sequence star is when a star is at its most stable form. The most common star are red dwarfs. They are less than half the size of the mass of our sun, and they burn their fuel very slowly, so can live longer than any other type of star over 100 billion years. A brown dwarf forms when a star cannot get hot enough to reach nuclear fusion. It has actually failed to become a proper star, but it is still not a planet, because it actually still glows, but very dimly. Our sun is a yellow dwarf star, so when they run out of hydrogen fuel, the core shrinks then heats up and pushes out the rest of the star, turning it into a red giant. Red supergiants make our sun look tiny. These can be 20 times the mass and 1000 times larger. Red hypergiants such as the largest known star, which is VY Canis Majoris, are even bigger, and these can be over 2000 times the size of our sun. When smaller stars such as red dwarfs or red giants use up all of their fuel, and also their nuclear fusion slows down, the stars start to die. They actually become what is known as a small white dwarf, which actually emits white light until they finally darken into a black dwarf. And the massive stars like supergiants and hypergiants have very shorter lives. This is basically because they consume their fuel much faster than the smaller stars. As these massive stars die, they actually explode in a massive bright supernova. 
and the most massive stars that have gone supernova can actually turn into black holes. Stars actually range in colour, depending on how hot they are. In order of the lowest to the highest temperature, they can be brown, red, orange, yellow, white or blue. The brown ones being the coolest and the blues being the hottest. The light from some stars actually take hundreds of thousands of years to reach Earth. So therefore, when you look up at the stars in the night sky, you are literally looking back in time. Stars do not actually twinkle. They only appear to twinkle due to the turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere. And this deflects the light that reaches our eyes. Stars have played a very important role throughout human history. They have formed a massive part of religious practices and have been grouped into constellations and used in astrology star signs. And this has helped us design calendars to understand the year and also a very important navigational tool for early explorers that went across the land and the seas. So I hope that's given you a great insight into stars from the smallest red dwarfs to the blue hypergiants from nebula to black holes. I hope you've learned something. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, click the like button, and if you want to support the channel, click subscribe. Thank you for watching.